What is up, guys? This is Richard, also known as Tikwe. We playing a game today as the French. As you can see down here, and we are playing against the English. So let me just uh, put this bigger into window mode. Uh, options, settings, I'm in window mode, I want to be in borderless full screen. It's just messing around with the recorder, so excuse me for that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we're playing against the English. Um, so a quick point to note is, as you can see, it is the map. I cannot know the name, but they're doing the standard right thing, where your six first villagers get full to food. First one is on the house, and this I don't know why he put the gold mine first because you get no advantage to that. So as you can see, what I did, I have the six villagers on food. First one is going to the house. There's less idle time. The first one will build. The second one will already start farming gold. So more or less by the time the gold mine is done, this will already have ten gold in the bank. He has to farming. But there was some delay in getting that done because you lose a bit of food production. This is just the standard better way to do that. Uh, I do click this villager back to get the gold there. I could have done that a little bit better, but I'm coming back here with some wolves. Um, just because I didn't check in the beginning if it was in English or Rus, what type of player it was. Um, but yeah, so as a French, the main important thing to know is a few tactics that you can play. They're a very easy faction to play. Um, you can see I found him here on the scout route. Um, he's farming some wood, some gold, but I, I, I don't really know that here. So I am scouting more for sheep right now because I am trying to get to the second age. And that's the main thing that you want to do. I'm just going to pause here. If you are playing in the beginning, you have to decide what your um, goal is going to be, right? So as you can see here, um, you know, on my side and on his side, this, this is an exact mirror going on right now. Um, and we, you have to decide, okay, am I building what landmarks? Do you know the landmarks? And if you want to see what type of landmarks there is, you can actually go press escape and you can go to the tech trees. And at the tech trees, you can actually see all of the information. This you can find in the beginning of the game or the main home screen as well to know what exactly every single building does, what type of upgrades is it. If you just click the little up arrow down here and you have four ages um, in every single game. You have Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age and Imperial Age. And I can actually check what he has as an English. Obviously, you can't pause in a live game, but you're playing against an AI or you made a custom game, you, you can pause. Um, so I can see, okay, he can build a council hall, and that's the one that actually produces longbows, and they produce at a rate of 15 seconds. You can see that just under the wood, um, what type of upgrades they have and what age they have that at. Um, or if he goes for the Abbey, Abbey, uh, Abbey of Kings, um, I can actually see what that is or what that does. So if you're not sure, just check while you're in the game, um, and that will give you an idea of what's happening. So you can see up here, I am on 200 food, 200 gold. He has a total of nine, um, 12 villagers and one building, so 13 villagers in total, right? But this is something I want to um, make note here of, right? I have three on gold. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on food. And if I just click over to Richard, or nine on food, actually. Um, and the reason being is the way I play it is I put my first two on gold, and I trained five villagers with the first 250 food, because it's 50 food per villager, right? Um, I train five villagers, and then after that's done, I just put them back to food. Then by the time they gather the 400 food, 
just with two, I know I have three right now, but just with two, you get to around 200, 210 gold. Um, and then your food is ready as well. And then you immediately can press T or click on a villager and click on a landmark. And you can choose one of two landmarks in every single age. So you'll see that will happen quite shortly now. Um, he's on... 250 gold, so he's over farming gold. You can see he's already moving them. So you, this guy, uh, Rappersen, he does know somewhat what he's doing. He has the, the villagers on stone now. And I want to show you from my perspective. Um, I have not scouted, scouted him out at all right now, right? I have found some sheep. I have sheep right now. But you also know... Uh, if you knew what type of faction you're playing against, like for argument sake, Rus, um, or uh, Abbasid Dynasty that actually moves the town center, or Rus, the range of the town center might be less. So you can see the active range at where they can shoot you. Whereas for, um, for his town center, that range will be much, much wider. Uh, because they have that extra advantage to the faction, so uh, you can you can lose your scout your scout quite easily if you don't go into if you go too deep into that range because by the time you get it out, um, they will long shot you and kill you. Um, so you can play on this barrier, uh, and I think there's a there's something to do with the height elevation difference that makes this ring. Um, further or longer but i think that is the actual and this is the maximum that's possible so i'm just gonna go back to my view so you can see how i'm scouting them out so i'm i know there's always a 50 50 chance you're going to be right across from him um you can see i'm already building my landmark here he's already uh, farming that uh stone and if you see a player farming stone, he's not heavy in stone, but he is heavy in stone, and I'll tell you why. Um, three villagers on stone, he has five villagers on wood, so that to me says he is looking at building a second town center, but he still is waiting for the food to get to 400 because of the villagers, how he's splitting. Another thing you need to know is that when you farming berries, berries is slower, has a slower farming rate um, with your villagers than sheep, and sheep is slower than deer. <clears throat> you can do boar with certain factions as well, and then do farms, and farms is like an average food income per, per minute. I am not good enough to know the exact numbers yet. I need to write those down. Um, so if those, this villager that is here was still on sheep, that is understandable, but he probably built this so he has the access to the upgrades. You can actually see he does not have any of the upgrades yet because um, they do require just above here the red text saying that you need fugal age. So that's the second age. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm a little bit in, a, uh, in the lead on that regard because my building is usually five down um, so what I do is I usually select the first few villagers uh, or all the villagers that's on food um, in this case it's 12 you can see I still have the three on gold and then I'll dump the food in to the town center and then immediately come back and start building and prioritizing some back onto food it just gets that initial spike down and it allows you to still have some production of food so you don't have any idle time or zero time of building um, villagers. Because villagers, every single villager you have will increase the amount of actual resources you have. So here I see his town center, I back off with my horse. Immediately you saw that little spin back that I did there. It was to actually... Um, avoid being shot because I saw first thing town center I know I am within that range so if you look at it from his perspective he can see me and as soon as I reach this line you can already see the arrows coming at me um, he starts shooting me so I do notice um, from my view uh, 
Uh, I can see he's on wood. I have not spotted the stone town center, but I can see there is definitely wood happening. So I want to find out what it what it is he's doing. At the same time, just making sure you don't stop or have any idle villagers. Um, there's a setting that you can choose. You can see here if there's any idle villagers. It's usually after 14 seconds. Um, they will go idle if they don't do anything for 14 seconds, I think. Um, but if you go into settings and you go to controls, um, I think it's this one. I think it's down here. Yeah. Okay. So what you do is you go to controls, you say view and remap controls. Um, you go to common keys and there is one where you cycle through town center by pressing control H or you cycle through to your town center. If you press control or if you press H, you automatically will jump to your town center. Uh, for, if you want to focus on it or if you want to select it, you press H. If you want to focus it, you press control H. But you can change this to what is comfortable for you. Um, it takes a while to learning the different um, keys, um, but for argument's sake, your villagers, um, if you want to select all, oh, this is custom to me, but usually I just, I'm still learning. If you just click on this little button here, does he, uh, let's see if he has any other villagers right now. Um, he also doesn't have any other villagers. I'll show you that when I'm, when when we get there. So I'm scouting him out. Um, at the same time, I'm trying to finish my first um, landmark. So with the French, is a nice little trick if you build the school of cavalry, where you get um, a pretty pretty nice strong early game unit. So for the French, when you build the school of cavalry, you already get uh, royal knights um, in your second age. If I have to compare that to the English, at the second age, um, they do have with the council for access to the longbow. But if we go to the stable, they only have access to horsemen. So they have to go to the third age just to compete with knights. Um, they can compete with the knights with spearmen, which you obviously do have at the barracks. Um, where's the barracks? Archery range, stable, siege tower, blacksmith market. Why am I missing barracks? Because that's in the first age. You can build the bar barracks in the first age. <laughs> but you can only build spearmen in the second age. Some factions can build them in the first age. Um, so you have your spearmen here, you have your early men at arms. Um, that's what they will be building at the second tier. It doesn't matter what landmark have. Um, he will be able to produce this. And you can see um, it says anti-cavalry specialist. So a spearman does bonus damage uh, to cavalry. And as you upgrade the, to the different ages, you can obviously upgrade your spearman and your minute arms. And the upgrades usually look like this. Um, in the upgrade itself, you can click these upgrades um, and that will make your standard um, unit that next unit. Um, the English also do have in the early age the Vanguard men at arms, the early men at arms. Um, they are quite strong, so they have an extra tier for their uh, men at arms. If, you, if I go back here to the French, You'll see at my barracks, I do not have access to men at arms, only up to age three. So if he had to go heavy men at arms, I will not be able to contest that. And that is a strategy that the English likes to use. They use men at arms with a few spearmen if they're playing against the French. Um, and they focus on their early pressure that they get out of the... Um, Tower. Sorry, I still need to learn these names. The council hall. So out of the council hall, he's going to produce these longbowmen. And the longbowmen, you can see, produces archers at 15 seconds, where a standard uh, archery range would produce longbow as well, but they would produce at a longer uh, rate. They they produce at a slower rate. Um, your 
council hall increases the speed at which it trains uh, long women. I think it's half. So you get, um, you know, essentially two archer ranges by building that council hall. So it's definitely choosing the right landmark to go for. I did scout that out when I saw that back here. Um, but I'm running back. I should have gone around, but I'm scared I'm going to run out of food. Um, and I was probably just focusing too much on my base. You can see I went onto the wood. And I have my villagers on food, but the best thing I should have done is to actually go and scout him out. If I go back to his perspective, um, just to show you what he's seeing right now, he's not in H2, but the advantage of me being in H2 is not being used. Because I'm just farming food, I'm just farming wood, and I'm just farming gold. And at the same time, he's getting that opportunity to age up farming food farming stone actually uh, very little gold he is scared of me rushing him so he's building some towers investing some resources in defense um, a good thing to remember especially when your gold is not in this ring or your berries or even the berries that are here on the edge that won't be too much defended defense if he comes in here with like four or five units um you might lose some villagers and that can swing the game in his favor um a tower with five villagers on that resource if someone attacks you select the villager and you can see this if you just press f and they will garrison or you press g and they will order automatically seek um the closest garrison. So these villagers will run to the to the town center. This villager will run to the tower if it's finished building. And these two might choose probably the town center as well to run to. So yeah, you can see he's still building there. He did a really good job on the sheep. Um, he has three, four, five, six carcasses there. But on my side, he didn't do any scouting, so, so he has zero idea um, what I'm doing. He's just focusing on his own, on his own economy and his own game style. Um, I'm coming back on this side, scouting for more sheep. It's very important to try and get at least, you know, five or six sheep. Um, just a quick note on the sheep. Like I think you'll be able to see this um, when you have this map, especially. These forests, the sheep generally are not in the forests. They're in these open little areas just on the side of the forests. So if you find the forest, it's always good to just like slowly cut around it. If you find that it ends and you're moving into enemy territory, the best thing is to just cut through it uh, to a different part of the map. Like you can see, I and mean, then here I'm kind of on the edge, but I'm still moving through it. Wolves, if you're playing Roos, wolves can spawn in the shaded area, but and relics they can spawn in the in the in the hidden tall grass, but your sheep generally will always be out of that um, in the open areas. Let's see if he did find all these sheep. This is a nice deer. You see, this one is just wandering around, but it should necessarily be on the outside um, of this. But even if you ran anywhere in this close vicinity and that sheep will bind you and they automatically find you if your scout comes in range um so he has the tower up but he, his scout is just standing still and that's something you must uh, try and avoid have your scout moving around i usually press control 2 bind my or control 1 to bind my scout so in the beginning put your first villagers on sheep uh, keep in the town center, control 2 to bind town center, to start training your first few villagers and uh, click on the scout control 1 and then if you double click 1 you automatically jump to your scout. So you can see um, my scout is here in front. I don't know why I haven't scouted him out properly. I don't know like I know what the English playstyle is, they can rush you with archery ranges, but this was interesting. So I don't think I saw this immediately, but he's building a second town center, um, and that's what you get with the food and the second age. So that he's definitely going for an uh, economy boom, um, whereas I was focusing now on my resources. I'm focusing on I think some upgrades. 
you see I already got the pick upgrade, I got the wood upgrade. I didn't get the food upgrade because I don't have a mill out. I apologize for the hiccup. Um, but I know earlier I saw the landmark, the council hall out, right? So I didn't know if he was going to rush me with the longbowmen. And horses are accounted to archers, whereas spearmen are accounted to horses, right? So if he has the second age spearmen and longbowmen combo, he can actually push in with that force and you can use your siege workshop to create battering rams and actually siege at age two very, very effectively. It's a strategy that the English use um, and you can practice that. But for now, you can see I'm building a blacksmith. The French has a very nice advantage. They automatically get extra damage. You can see right now um, I have one ranged armor and zero melee armor and I have nine damage. Um, nine versus range, nine versus um, spear, so that's obviously my melee range and that's usually your siege damage as well. Um, I think when you siege it changes, I can't remember what that is right now. Um, but when this is done, I'll just use this horse to show you what I mean by it. When the blacksmith is done, you'll actually see this go up. You automatically train that so you don't have to um, research that ability so you can see it already went up to 10 and also your school of cavalry works very similar to your uh, council hall where your horses will train a little bit quicker um, the right way that French usually rush in the early game that's very overwhelming and that's why um, you can see he did build the extra tower because I had to rush him he's just gonna push these villagers into this tower and he's going to be safe. And because he's building a forward town center, these villagers are going to be safe. And he has one longbow out here. Um, a lot of villagers, a total um, of 20 villagers, one yeah, idol. Oh, that's on my side. I have 20 villagers. He has 26 villagers. Um, 25, probably, because of the Failed one longbow man that he has here. Um, so I'm building that because I don't know what's going on. If I went to scout him and I saw that he was actually yeah, farming the rock, I knew he was going for a town center. So all of that wood and resources would have been going into the town center. So to train longbowmen, he necessarily can't train longbowmen because his wood that he did farm was being invested into a second town center and some houses. Um, and you can still see he hasn't gotten any of his um, upgrades and that would benefit him greatly. I don't know why he's building a second lumber camp because the better thing to do if you want to micro manage your lumber camp is protect the villager and you'll build one just on the edge of this wood line. So that's his scout. I saw his scout came too close to my town center. He wasn't looking and because of that I just surrounded him with my horses. So I can actually um, quickly kill that scout. But it would have given him some information because obviously he would have seen what's going on and he would have seen my forces and now he's probably going to react and start training Spearman. Um, which he did. You can see here the Spearman are really now get coming up because he saw the horses. And the Spearman, as you can see, um, they do 8 damage for 20 versus Cavalry. So a Spearman versus this Horseman, um, I'm just going to do a standard 10 Spear damage where he's going to do 29 damage versus me. So I don't know he has the Spearman out yet, um, but I do want to go for a rush and, and try to use my, my French Cavalry. The better one to use is obviously the Royal Knights. Um, here you can see my villagers, my sheep ran out. Um, and usually you get a a, 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 um, a hunt quite close by, so you can see this is my hunt. But any efforts from him to move forward will isolate that food and I can actually lose because he's starving me out. Um, so I think I choose to send them all the way back here to berries to um, farm berries. So I'm speeding this up to show you there the farms are coming, I mean just training more villagers. 
I'm on one town center and you can see um, on my side I am on a total villager count um, of about 20 where on his on his side he's on a villager count of 26 so because of the double town center he can boom or get a lot more resources a lot more quicker um, and because I am French and I, he knows that the French are prone to rushing, he can't see me because I am in the stealth forest, but towers would be able to see me. Um, he actually had a very interesting place that I'm actually very excited to show you guys this game. Um, but it's walling off here on the side and I can't see that yet because still I'm not scouting. I literally just saw this town center and the scout and the spearman and I'm like, nope. I can't, I can't attack that. So I back off and I start training archers because I know the archers will be a counter for the spearmen. Um, so on both sides, we're not necessarily playing to our best right now. He's over defending here, um, chopping the wood, you know, training villagers and getting a good economy. He's scared his food is going to run out. He doesn't want to go for the hunt as well. So he's building the farm close. He's building the tower to make sure these villagers are protected. These villagers are protected. Um, and on my side, I am farming wood. I'm farming heavy wood um, because I wanted to get those arches out. And I'm slowly transitioning into a different food source. You can see I'm also on the berries far at the back. Because the chances of, me, of him finding that out after I killed his scout is very low. Um, and you can see that from his perspective. Um, that is that is what he's scouted out so far. So he doesn't know I have berries um, here at the back. He knows about the hunter in the front. And he does know about the buildings that I do have here. Um, but you can see he's closing that up. He's very, very heavy on wood. Um, if he was more on gold, as you can see right now, and more on food, you can expect a castle rush to get castle uh, age, and that's 1,200 food with 600 gold. And um, that can get you into castle age. If you click here, you can see there, um, to advance to castle age, you need 1,200 food and 600 gold. And it takes some time to produce that, but the more villagers you put on that on that landmark, the quicker he'll be able to do it. Um, on my side as well, I have much less resources than him right now because I'm investing in more archery ranges and units because I am scared the English is going to do the rush because I did see the second town center, so I expected that this guy actually knew what he was doing. Um, and and we both were just you know really uh, anxiety driven um, you know intermediate players. He's towering everywhere. He's even getting the upgrade in his tower. So your towers has an automatic upgrade. Uh, you can choose one of three per age or one in total of the three ages: uh, the arrowless, springle emplacement, and the cannon emplacement. Um, depending on what you're fighting against, you can choose, but he opted to go for the arrow list in, on these outposts, which means, you know, he's using the stone to get those upgrades, because you can see it's uh, 50 stone, 25 gold, whereas, like, the spring ult is 50 uh, gold and 125 stone, so he needs stone, and you can see he's also going back to the berry bot farm at the back. Um, because it's a lot safer. So another thing is, if you click on your archery range, what I like doing, um, I'm just pausing because there's a fight happening, I usually double click any of my buildings, so I would press shift, then add those buildings all together, um, it will select, because this counts as a stable, if I double click the stable with shift, it selects both, then I double click the archery range, and I like binding them to 7, so I press Control 7, and then if I place a landmark, you, you can see the landmarks will all eventually go to the same place. Um, so I am not focusing and prioritizing my food, my resources very well. I have 500 food, <coughs> 
almost zero gold. I do have the same few villagers on 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 gold, and you know I have the berries at the back and heavy heavy wood, but that doesn't mean anything if I don't have something to to do. Um, so I'll show you why I did the heavy wood um, in a second right now. You can see this upgrade here called Siege Engineers, and that's the one that the English use so quickly and so well with their archers and spearmen in the beginning. Um, because if you have 300 wood, your infantry, not your cavalry, your infantry can produce siege, battering rams, and siege towers. Towers will just put your units on top of the wall, um, and your battering rams will actually um, work like a tank and tank these dam uh, shots from these towers and from archers if you attack move in that general direction. But I see these villagers out, I have quite a few archers, so I want to deny these towers because I know the more defenses he has, the worse off it's going to be for me, and he's going for a white tower, which I would also be able to see, um, I think very shortly, but I think I do use my scout here. So he pushes forward with his arch, with his spearmen, but I can't do anything with my horses. My horses would just die versus these spearmen. And so I push the spearmen to the archers and I use the archers to fight the spearmen. So you micromanage your units in such a way that's beneficial to you, but it's, it's a very even trade. Um, I did prolong the, the, the towers from being built, but it, it was still just a standard fight, just trying to find out what it was doing. Um, and I did not see the landmark here. But here you can see the battering ram is coming out on my side. And once that battering ram is out, you can see now he has the tower. And I find that out the hard way because I send horses to the front. Um, this is about a sacrifice. So if you know those horses are, um, you know, 100 foot each and tw in 20 wood, so that's essentially 800 foot lost that you just sacrificed just because you didn't choose uh, where to send your units correctly at, at that time. So because he has this tower out, this tower is very strong. It works almost similar to a castle. And then I bring the ram forward because I want to deny the towers. So you can see your units does have a siege ability as well. All units do that. Um, and he actually has 16 siege damage. Um, archers do not have any siege ability. Um, villagers also has siege capability, so you can use villagers to siege down rams and, and, and buildings and stuff as well, but they just have very low health. Um, as you can see, that villager has 50 health, whereas a spearman has 90 health. So it's going to be much harder for my archers to kill a spearman than a villager. Um, so I'm just using the archers to kill the spearmen while I'm trying to destroy the stars and I'm not really getting right here so I back off you know sacrificing my whole army um, if we go to his perspective right now he also doesn't necessarily have an army he has men at arms coming out and archers um, but there is no army on his side um, he's still just focusing on economy focusing on heavy defense and focusing on getting that wood up um, some stone again you know there's no it, no direct plan like going castle age and using castle age to train like mangonels because he has all the wood and gold right now and, and, and possibilities to train mangonels or sprinkles and have a siege, siege advantage on me because on my side um, I am still age 2, I am nowhere close to age 3, um, I'm sitting on 1200 food, I'm only on 300 gold, um, but I do have the the, the four, five, 5 villagers on gold right now, so I'm trying to get there, um, but his resources, his economy, everything is much better because he has the double town center, and most of the time the double town center does... Um, spike your villagers in such a way that you just outscale your opponent. So here again I train a scout so I want to see what's going on. Uh, 
and that's these towers now with that spring old upgrade um, that did so much damage to me. You can see it's an upgraded tower. The tower alone has 2000 health and the siege tower, the white tower here at the back, that's actually able as the English to train units, um, all your castles or your castle networks train units and any units in the castle oh, network um, will also get this little upgrade network of the citadel which increases their attack speed by 50% so in English fight in your own castle territory or build a tower with a few villagers when you're attacking because it does make a huge difference um, in your abilities to to apply pressure and get your damage up so I saw you know on his side this and the men at arms so I'm scared of the men at arms so I'm like okay cool I'm gonna build my own men at arms so I start training uh, my castle age landmark the Royal Institute which allows me to do upgrades of any age and I have this queued up so some villagers I actually select the one villager to come over and just build this barracks and you see he's still not thinking of attacking he's just focusing on economy and he has four units out and a lot of defense um, whereas he's doing this this is really good of him so every single unit has standard attack but as soon as you get your blacksmith your blacksmith has plus one plus two and plus three upgrades so it's essentially 50 percent to 100 percent more damage depending on one unit they are shooting at. If you take an archer, which has 7 damage, and you compare that to um, my archer, which has 1 armor and 1 ranged armor, it means every arrow will do 6 damage, because it's 7 damage minus whatever range armor I have, right? Um, if you have a, man, a spearman, or a man at arms, um, that will actually be much more difficult because the men at arms um, they have five range armor, so every archer will only well in this case he upgraded it, so it will only do four damage against the men at arms. So you need a lot more archers to kill a man at arms because he's um, shooting a different unit. So certain units counter other units. It's part of the game. Um, but these little upgrades that he's getting, the plus one attack and defense plus one, uh, he already got the plus one attack and defense for his archers, but for his melee units he's getting upgrades as well, which is really good. Um, so now I'm level three, I can do upgrades here, I get the um, upgrades for my archers, I think I was busy with a challenge at this point, um, your French Proficient challenges, there's 15 per capital, and that sign that you guys hear. Um, sometimes when a gold mine or a stone mine or something runs out, you'll actually hear like a mini stone breaking sound. That means that the, it, it's depleted, and as soon as that happens, uh, you'll see the villager plant go up. You actually have to move villagers. You can see his stone actually run up at the back. If you delete the building, you don't get anything from it, but you can use it to still do upgrades. So I'm just talking through what I see. He's planning on some form of attack um, because he ha does have the mangonel. And he did see that my previous fight was quite heavy. I had a lot of units. So he's not scouting out. He doesn't know what's happening. But he wants the stone. So he has the, the defenses coming up. Um, and on my side, I'm just focusing on some upgrades, getting my... my um, archers out and my arbaletiers or my heavy archers, uh, your crossbowmen, what they call them in the, in the English, um, they are very very good against anti-armor units like your men-at-arms. You can see my men-at-arms at the moment because I automatically get the um, blacksmith upgrades. I'm already at the level 3 so my single man at arm is doing 14 damage, where a single man at arm on his side um, goes on 11. So man at arms 
he has more armor, yes, but I'm still doing more damage um, because of that French advantage. Um, but if he had used them early, it does help. And Mangonels are a huge siege advantage. If he had to push me with this army and get some rams out with his archers, uh, I don't think I would have been able to survive because I have one tower uh, here at the back, but I don't have anything to protect myself. I'm just playing on the fact that I know he's being defensive so I can use my resources um, to get some upgrades going and to get some form of infantry going so I can actually fight and, uh, and attack him um, and get this game going. <laughs> but this is quite a substantial army. Um, he's also you know, building up an army. He saw my horses. And he probably thinks I am going to counter that with the archers. So he's building the horses to counter the archers. He's building the spearmen to counter my horses. He's building the mangonels to counter my masses. Um, and I use my scouts again just to see what he's doing. I see the heavy stone. Um, I'm trying to find if there's a trading route going. You can see he's walling up extremely heavy. Um, and I'm just poking at his um, trading route that he's trying to set up here at the back because his gold is starting to get low because he has this one that was here in the front. Once this runs out, his next gold mine is far here at the back um, or this big one here in the middle of the map. Uh, it took them taste for that and that's not easy if you have to go and taste for that. So I have the I saw the mangonels with my previous scout and now I have the spring lock because they outrange the mangonels um, and I know they can very very quickly um, you know if you think about it where I'm standing right now I know he has defense so I'm training long ranged um, counterweight trebuchets and spring lots to defend my counterweight trebuchets from any spring lots on his side. Um, and then I have a forward men at arms and the, 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 the archers as well as um, my crossbowmen to defend these siege units. That's all they're doing because the siege unit is going to win you the game. They're going to be able to break down these buildings and actually do some damage. Um, so I felt comfortable with more than two or two you can see now i'm starting to push in and he does have a, a, a nice army here and um, he has the minute arms he has five knights now trained up and he has upgraded them he has the crossbowmen so that does show you that he does know he's countering into heavy units into light units he has the spearmen for my horses and he has the mangonels he has the double castle now and this um, heavy outpost in front. So for me to breach in front here is going to take a lot of effort. So because I know of the towers, um, you can see these towers, they can see all the way into the stealth areas. So uh, good practice is to take your tower, um, defend it with all these units, move forward, and put a tower right here in front. You don't have to upgrade it, but put a tower right here in front because then you can see these units coming a mile away before they you need to react when they're already almost in your base. So now I start training the rams and you can see I'm building a tower so I can get my own vision. The tower will allow my trebuchet, we can't, which can't attack this right now because it can't see it because you have less vision in the star forest and you have less vision because they have the height advantage. Um, at the same time, you can see his food is very, very low. Um, he has nine on farms there. He has four on farms here. And if you are playing the English and you have an economy boom like he is doing, focus on farms. Because if you get your farming upgrade on your H4, you get this enclosure. So for every single farm, you get one gold every three and a half seconds. So your gold is going to skyrocket and that's going to help so much to keep your siege and your heavy knights 
um, and your crossbowmen um, and your men at arms because they also co cost um, gold. You're not that much, they're only 20 gold and 100 food. But because you're getting the food and the gold, it's very easy to produce those food and gold heavy units and counter certain other units and actually have a really nice time um, fighting with that. So I'm using the ram going forward. The ram is just a sacrifice. Um, but I want to get rid of these towers and kind of gauge what he wants to do with his army. Because he has to attack this or try and attack this. Otherwise, I'll just keep sieging him with my range. Um, so that's two towers already gone in no time. And that was in less than two minutes. Two towers already done. And look at this coming in right here, very very good placement, so he has the knights and his four units grouping all of my units which is trying to defend and this double mangonel shot that's going to land right on top of them right, so you can see how quickly that just devastates my army uh, from my perspective, it's really really nice group damage to have the mangonels um, and you have to make sure they stay defended because What's going to happen is if you don't have any sprinkles, as you can see, I'm moving them for it, and I can just target them up and they immediately go down because you do extra damage with your sprinkles um, against any siege type of equipment. So now I still have my trebuchets pushing forward. I have destroyed his siege. I have a higher archer mass, mass than he does, and it's crossbowmen, so their damage is low, um, but it's definitely more than the longbowmen, but longbowmen, because they have the tower upgrade, they actually attack much, much faster than I do, and they actually almost win this fight because of it. So now he can't see me anymore, so these units will slowly start moving forward um, and my springholds and my units and I'm sending the men at arms forward so they can actually take the damage from the towers or from the archers while my springholds you know pick off the, the units here in front to try and push into his base. I'm still sieging, he's still trying to be defended. I have a mangonel as well to help defend my units and destroy any mass on his side. Getting a second tower up just to increase the vision. And this is really good. You, know, you, you don't need to force anything. So I know he's going to be able to train units. I don't know he doesn't have a lot of farms. Um, you know, he has the gold coming in here. He has the farms. And the nice thing is, as a fringe, there is this little zone. You can see the plus signs. Um, it gives like a little ring to your farms, which increases the villagers' um, farming rate if you're in this vicinity. So it's a good practice to put them like this because um, the box stops one farm in all directions. So you can get seven, eight farms of really, really good quality food coming in from this setup that you have right here. So you can see here at the back he's producing a monastery. Um, if you pick up relics, which are these little golden items, um, they give extra gold per minute. Um, I think it's 100 gold per minute. Just put it in the monastery. They heal your units, which is quite nice. And if you get the tithe barns upgrade, um, you get extra 30 food, wood, and stone, which is equivalent to basically having an extra villager or two um, without having the villagers. So as you can see, I'm getting the towers up so I can see what's coming in my way. I have my men at arms and my crossbowmen, which will, which are upgraded, as you can see from my blacksmith. Um, I have the H2 upgrades already done. My units are training. You can see from my perspective, my units are actually pinned to automatically run forward so because i have them bound to seven i just press seven and i right click here in front and they'll move forward and you can see he's not even trying to attack my units he's just going straight for the siege 
all those units went straight for the siege. So my unit are trying very hard just to stop the siege from being destroyed. Um, so he is trying to stop my siege and I'm trying to siege so we can, you know, use the wind scenario that we have right now. His is to defend so you can get um, possibly to Imperial Age and get very, very strong, um, you know, men at arms and very strong longbowmen and just overwhelm you with numbers is what the English like to do because of the resources that they get from farms and everything in the late game. But at this point in stage, I am very heavy on the food, uh, on the wood. Um, I'm starting to produce villagers. I actually stopped earlier, which was very bad. But I also don't have too many farms. You can see the farms that I have right here. He should be on about 70 to 90 villagers at this point um, because he, have the, he has the double town center. And that would have just outscaled me by miles if he used that villager advantage. Um, this was also not very good of him because a, trebu a counterweight trebuchet um, does more damage against buildings. They, they don't do extra damage against the trebuchet. So for them to take out my trebuchets, it's the wrong move. I think he doesn't have the experience with the um, Springles to destroy Siege. Um, they will do some splash damage to units, but this was definitely the, the wrong unit to train right now. And also the horseman, he's training, he's panicking um, to train those horsemen to have the knights he would have much rather used that food um, and would just train spearmen or save up a little bit more to train men at arms because you know your trebuchets they're quite expensive they're 500 wood and 250 gold if you use your food which you see he does have he can have a mass of 10 or 20 men at arms right now um, if he didn't train the trebuchets in the same time he took to train the trebuchets so now I'm planning a push here, and I don't think he knows it because I'm doing it in the style forest. But I have these rams being produced right now, and a few shots from the spring molds, the trebuchet goes down. And I know my units are quite close, so if they rush me with the army, you know, I can um, push forward. So I have the three rams ready, I have the units ready. The rams should have been in front, but I automatically take the rams, I click on the town center. And now I'm taking the fire of the units while the rams go to do their work on the town center. And I'm using the springles, I'm attacking the back line. So usually you, you can just drag everything, but I double click the springles like this and then click on the units that I actually want to get rid of. Um, like you can see, I, I shot the his spring out first before I got rid of the other units. And all I'm doing now is protecting my siege, putting, pushing him with the rams. Um, and at this point, it's very, very bad for him. Because look how much food and gold he has. But he does not have the right buildings in place. Um, more barracks. You can build four or five barracks at the same time. Train men at arms and push those men at arms into my men at arms. It would have been a much harder fight for me. Uh, to push into this and at this point the siege is destroyed and now I can start focusing on you know picking off on this this town because I have the one town center and I want to get this tower this castle the landmarks done because that's the win scenario and you either destroy the landmarks you capture all the sacred sites and hold them for 10 minutes or you build um, I forgot the name of it again. You build a wonder. A wonder you have to defend for 14 minutes and you need 3,000 of each resource. Very, very difficult to win with a wonder. But if you get it right once in a while, it's really nice. Especially in your 4v4 or, or um, 3v3 games. Um, and you have choke points where it's very easy to defend for a long time. Um, it's, it's a nice option to rush with... Um, this if you can into a late game wonder and win it with that. I have some trading happening. I'm using the trade to balance out resources, but I'm heavy on the wood. I have 20 villagers on wood because I want those rams and those trebuchets, counterweight trebuchets to come forward. You can see I'm building another ram here. 
I'm selecting three or four units. They call it a, um, the ram dance if you have a lot of units because if you have 10 or 20 units on a ram, the w units that can't build because there's no space will just keep running around your own unit <laughs> and that's quite funny. Um, but now it's starting to get very difficult for him because I have the double tribuchets, I have the mangonels helping to defend. These mangonels won't necessarily do a lot of damage, uh, they don't have uh, unit damage, it's more for siege. It's more for, um, you know, you can see there it's 30 normal damage, 90 siege damage, and a uh, man at arms is 155 health, so they will have to fire six or seven times just to kill one man at arms. So it's definitely not the right unit, but he's going for H4 here. Um, if this was you, the best thing to do right now, and you want to rush for an H4, all of these villagers, all of these villagers, I know you're sacrificing wood, but you, you'd rather get this castle up as soon as possible that you know is going to be in my range. Um, it's quite dangerous to have that so in front because you know I'm already sieging. This tower next to a town center here at the back would have been worth more because I wouldn't have seen it and I had to react against a cost, double castle and unit production um, to kind of get to it. So that would actually deter me and make me back off if if that, that castle had to be here at the back. But now I see this is being built in the front and I'm not allowing it to go up. So the orange line is the building being built. The red is its health. And you can see I have six siege battering rams being built. And they're almost done. And each one has 700 health. Um, he only has two spring holds. For him to defend against seven rams with what he has is virtually impossible. So as soon as these rams go forward, I have a few going for that landmark, I have a few going for the castles, and all these units are, it's just to get rid of any nuances or any, you know, attacks from this side. You can even see the villagers being pulled from all sides to come and attack these rams to stop the push. Um, but at this point, it's very, very difficult for someone to, to come back unless you were training some massive army here in the back. Uh, you see with the food and gold that he has, 1,400 food, 700 gold, very, very heavy stone. He should have probably built like seven or eight castles, try and get H4 for the cannon emplacement upgrade. That would have made it more difficult to push with the sea trams. Um, but I'm just using my units to, you know, take the damage of any units he's training at the same time pushing in the ground. This is a very, very intermediate to low level game. Um, if it was against the pro player, we both would have lost so much resources, probably never been able to get this farm route um, up, um, not being able to farm this forward gold without being protected by some form of castle or something. Um, and now you can see I'm just going in for the kill. I have one more landmark to destroy. Um, usually in the top left corner it tells you, you know, two out of three or three out of four landmarks. And when you destroy a landmark, it gives you this little text as an enemy as well. So from my perspective, you can see it says destroyed landmark, fully repaired to restore it. Does show it on my side as well, but it is a landmark. Um, so, so you know what buildings there are. That one didn't finish the tower that we castle is trying to build so um, it doesn't count but this is the last building as soon as this building goes down he's going to lose the game and the only th the reason why I won this game is because he didn't utilize the economy boost um, and the economy lead that he did have over him. you can see only now you know he used a lot of resources and if I go and look at what he used it on um, I cannot tell, even tell you where that food went. He could have traded it, he could have used it to do some upgrades, um, train villagers, I don't know, but that food was probably sold for gold because he has very high gold right now, so I think he sold his food for gold. Um, but yeah, the, oh, here, here we go. That's, that's where you can see he spent 
his resources on training experiment. It should have been men at arms. Um, like we said, a little too late. If he had those men at arms early, he would have been able to win this game. But that was a game between myself and a really, really decent intermediate opponent. Really defensive playstyle as the English. Um, but thank you very much for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And I'll be trying to post more videos like this. This is my first video. Um, they'll get much shorter, but we'll get better at playing these casted games. Um, but thank you very much for watching and hope you guys have a wonderful evening.